this video, I want to talk about a puzzle called Tatooine Sunset by Philip Newman. Tatooine is a desert planet in Star Wars, and there is even an alcoholic beverage named after that planet. Unfortunately, I know less than two-thirds of not much about Star Wars, so I will leave discussion to the experts and concentrate on the Sudoku. This is a classic Sudoku, so there are no extra rules such as thermometers, killer cages, king Sudoku, etc. It is a brutally hard puzzle. Simon couldn't solve it within half an hour. Eugene couldn't get a single pencil mark, let alone a single digit. But I've heard he plays a mean game of chess. Mark found the solution, but he needed to bifurcate twice. As you might have guessed, I discovered this puzzle on the excellent YouTube channel Cracking the Cryptic. I managed to find a solution using some insane logic, but it is not necessary for the whole world to know how long it took me to find it. So what is this insane logic? I have the original puzzle on the right of screen using Microsoft Excel. I have color-coded rows and columns as red, blue or green and mapped them onto the grid on the left. For instance, the letter A on the right is in a green row and green column, so I chose a random square on the left grid that also lies in a green row and green column. Similarly, letter B is in the green row and blue column, so I randomly chose row A column 5 on the left. You can see that every cell in the red row and red column contains a digit, and same for every cell in the blue row and blue column. In the left grid, we cannot say that a single row will contain digits 1 to 9. In fact, I already have repeated 2s in row 1, for example. This is a consequence of choosing the wrong random squares. But if I take 3 rows of the same colour in the left grid, then I do get 3 copies of the digits 1 to 9, because these squares correspond to 3 rows in the right grid, and mapping individual cells on the right to random squares on the left cannot change anything. Of course, the same logic works for columns as well. We must put three sevens in columns four, five, and six on the left grid. But we can't put any sevens here because we already have three sevens in the top three rows of the left grid. So therefore, we can place three sevens here. We can do the same with nines. Now, what about twos? We can only have one two at most in this box because we already have two twos in the top three rows. So we can place two twos here. We can use similar logic using columns one, two, three and rows four, five, six. So we can place three sevens, three nines and two twos. Now where can five go in columns one, two and three? We can't have fives here because we already have three fives in rows four, five, and six. So we have three fives here. We can, similarly, we can have a three, two fours, and two sixes. And we can do the same in box three. Now the next question is, can we have three ones in box nine? The answer is no. Now, to see why, let us look at the right grid. I'm going to mark every empty square that lies in a green row and green column with an X. There are only six such squares, because all the squares in row 9 have already been taken by the digits 3, 6 and 2. But now you can see the problem. We can place a 1 in row 1, a 1 in row 6, but we can't place a 1 in row 9. So therefore, three ones in box nine on the left grid is not possible. For the same reason, we can't have three eights in box nine. We, we run into the same problem. Therefore, we must have two eights and two ones in box nine. And this gives us a one eight pair in row seven, eight, nine, and also a one eight pair in column seven, eight, nine. Now let's go back to the right grid. We need to place two eights in, in the squares marked with an x. But this x is not possible because it's in the same box as this eight here. So 
carbonate here, we carbonate here. So therefore, this square, row seven, column row one, column seven, must be an eight, and that gives us our first digit. Let's go back to rows seven, eight, nine in the left grid. We know that the bottom three rows must have three copies of the digits one to nine, but we already have a one eight pair here and here, so that means we can actually fill in the missing digits. These digits are three and four. And now that gives us every digit in box nine in the left grid. So if I color these squares gray, I can map these squares to the corresponding cells in the right grid. So this gives us the holy grail of Sudoku. I have discovered the nine dimensional wonky fish, and it is mathematically certain that the nine gray cells in the right grid must contain the digits 236311488 in some order. Now let's look at row six, column nine in the left grid. It's either one or eight, but can this cell be eight? The answer is no. If this cell is an 8, then box 6 in the left grid will contain only the digits 2, 7, 8, and 9. And that means the three squares marked with the letter Y in the right grid must contain 2, 7, 8, or 9. But we've already used 2 and 8 in the same column, so that leads to a contradiction. Therefore, this number on the left must be 1, and this must be 8. And now we have completed all three cells, uh, all three boxes in the left grid uh, in columns 7, 8, 9. And suddenly, we are cooking with nine-dimensional wonky fishes. We also know that the squares marked Y must be a 179 triple. And that means row 6, column 7 cannot be 1. And this allows us to complete every digit in the gray nine-dimensional wonky fish. So these numbers must be one. So row one, column six is three. Row six, column one is eight, and the other digit is four. We now come to the hardest part of the puzzle. Since there is only one square remaining, we can't use the usual tricks such as swordfish and jellyfish. Instead, we have to use a different type of fish, and that fish is... Yes, you guessed it. The missing square lies in a green row and blue column, so I'm going to highlight every such square in grey. I now have to map these nine squares into the corresponding box in the left grid. So I need green rows and blue columns. So I need to highlight this box in gray. So now I know that the nine dimensional wonky fish must contain the digits 777999228 in some order. And it's not hard to tell that the missing digit is a two. And that is how you solve Tatooine Sunset. Thanks for watching.